Hello everyone, Dave here, back with another video. Uh, today we're going to be doing a pretty, I'm going to try to keep it brief, uh, run through, review, impressions of uh, this past SummerSlam that, as of the time of recording, happened two days ago. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet here. Basically, this year's SummerSlam was like the equivalent of watching a movie that you've already seen. Like, all the twists, all the outcomes, I'm pretty sure anyone who is slightly paying attention uh, could have seen coming from a mile away. But they were still enjoyable when it happened. You know, it's like, um, we're just gonna cut to the, you know, chase here. Like, seeing Dominic turn on Rhea Ripley and uh, help Liv win... That was something that we all knew was going to happen. But still seeing it happen was like, oh, shoot, this is, he's really doing that, you know? Um, so basically, we're just going to jump into it here. We'll start with Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship. I think having the Women's World Championship first, like, I like it in theory because it's a great way to start the show, like starting right out the gate with something like big and like heavy. Um, but it also feels like they're relegating the Women's World Championship to just an opening act, which, um, I don't love. Like, I feel like you could have put another match here, but it also is still a great way to open the show. So, I don't know, it's not like something I'm mad about, but I just, I don't know, I kind of wish that they could, you know, the women could be given, you know, more, more of a headlining type status. Um... But anyway, yeah, uh, Liv won and retained the championship, uh, and Dominic um, costed Rhea that. It was really interesting, because, like, at first, they were making it seem like... Because he definitely was going to cost her the match in some capacity. But throughout the match, you know, the way that uh, Rhea went to go hit Liv with the chair, and Dominic grabbed the chair and said, no, don't do it, don't do it. Like, it looked like, oh, okay, maybe he's going to, you know, accidentally help her, similar to how he accidentally helped... Um, uh, uh, sorry, I'm spacing on names. Uh, he accidentally helped Liv uh, beat Becky, you know, with the chair situation. Um, but no, he really only took it just so that he could use it to help Liv later on um, by distracting the ref and then, uh, you know, having Liv um, get Rhea with the chair. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, we all saw it coming, but it happened, and uh, it was pretty crazy. Um it definitely shakes up the Judgment Day, or what's left of it, and we'll get some more of that later. Um, but I'm very interested to see where they go. I missed Raw last night, unfortunately. I haven't recorded. I plan to watch it tonight to see, like, what the next steps are. Um, but yeah, it's it's very, it's very going to be a very interesting time for, for that whole dynamic. Um, and I'm very curious to see what they do with Rhea. Um, obviously they're going to have her go after the belt again, but when, where, what capacity, you know, stuff like that. Um, next we're going to move on to, we're just going to go in order of what Bleacher Report has here. Um, so next we'll talk about Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. Uh, this was a great match. I was honestly glued to my TV. Like, I don't think I said one word during the entire match because I was just enamored with it. Um, it wasn't, like, even the most technical, like, best wrestling match I've ever seen or anything. It just was, like, something about it was just very riveting. You know, the, the way that these three guys, Drew, Seth, and, and, um, and CM all, like, hate each other, um, to varying degrees. It's just, like, it makes for interesting television. Um, so basically, like... The whole thing with the bracelet is, like, I I get it, I get it, but I feel like they could have done something different with that. The fact that it's just, like, a little bracelet of his wife and his dog is, it, it just seems a little, like, like, for example, when, when um, 
see him hit Drew on his shoulders and then he immediately dropped him because he saw that Seth had the bracelet on. It's like in any context other than wrestling, you would immediately be like, oh, this guy picked up the bracelet so nobody would trip on it and it wouldn't get lost and he just put it on so that he'd have his hands free. But because it's wrestling, he had to be like, dude, are you messing with me? Are you messing with me? And he's like, so it just seemed very forced, like that whole bracelet thing. Um, but if that's kind of the catalyst to move the rivalry forward and move the story forward, I guess I'm okay with it because you kind of need something to help push that forward. Um, it's also just like, when is CM going to win? You know, uh, I don't know. I could be wrong about this, but I don't know if he's actually won a match since he's been back because he like, he got hurt and, um, you know, he lost a lot in AEW. He lost in the UFC, like when's he gonna win you know um so i'm very curious to see what happens there i don't know like because now is he gonna be you know because he still is mad at drew because at the end of it drew took the bracelet back um which is kind of messed up and also the fact that drew had it in his trunks and then they're all kissing it that's how you get pink eye you know gotta be careful uh but it he took it back which was diabolical um, heel Drew McIntyre is kind of fun because he's just a big troll and I kind of really like that. Um, but it makes me wonder like, you know, it's really, it's really putting CM Punk on his back foot because he was very much, you know, you know, costing Drew the belt, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, getting one over on him and stuff. And then now CM Punk's on the back foot because Drew has something on him and he has the bracelet and everything. So I don't know. It's an interesting dynamic and an interesting tonal shift that I'm curious to see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, um, very interested in that. Uh, but yeah, it was a good match. I really enjoyed it. I want to see if, you know, CM is going to start to be pissed off with Seth now. Um, I'm curious to see whether Drew uh, is going to start beefing with Seth a little bit more. Because he was in the match, he was saying like he had a chair and he's like, hey, let me finish this because this is both of our problems. You just look away, let me take care of it. And then both of our problems are over. And then Seth was going to let him do it. And then he had a moment of clarity and he's like, no, 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 I can't. I can't let this happen. So it's very weird that Seth Rollins in that moment was the voice of reason. Um, but it's just, it's interesting. I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't expecting him to, to stop him. Um, and it kind of made it seem like, you know, despite all their history, like Seth was legitimately trying to have a fair match, at least for the most part, even though he and CM Punk have their history of not liking each other as well. So I don't know. It's curious to see where that goes. Next, we got Logan Paul and LA Knight for the United States Championship. I'm so happy LA Knight won this. Again, I don't like Logan Paul as a person, but I've said it time and time again. I've even said it in videos. I really wish he wasn't such an asshole in real life because as a wrestler, I like him. I think he's good in the ring. I think he's pretty decent on the mic. Like he, As a wrestler, Logan Paul is not an issue for me. So I didn't mind him holding the belt. I just mind that he's a part-timer holding a belt. The belt, the United States Championship needs to be back on, like, needs to get more eyes on it. And I think LA Knight's going to be a good holder of that belt. I think he's he's pretty over right now. A lot of people really like him. He's got people all over the country uh, screaming, you know, shouting for LA Knight, you know, LA Knight, yeah! Like, he's got everybody... He's, he's, he's big right now. And I think it's more than due that he got some hardware around him. Um, and I'm very happy to see that the match itself was fun. Always, always getting prime involved is somehow never not going to be funny. Um, getting hit with prime bottles, getting prime spit on you. It's, it's for some reason, it's, it's just very funny, uh, at least to me and, and my friends. Um, very uh acrobatic match very methodical match again logan paul as a wrestler he's not half bad um trying to think if there's anything like that stands out more than just the fact that la knight won the belt um yeah i don't i don't know i don't know who logan paul is gonna beef with next 
Um, I know he's got history with uh, Kevin. Um, my computer's turned off here, sorry. Uh, he's got history with Kevin, so maybe we'll see that again. I don't know. Um, and Randy as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens there. And then, of course, LA Knight, you know, who's going to be his first title defense because I feel like he's going to have a pretty decent reign. I, I, I think um, right now he's, like I said, he's pretty over. He's pretty popular. People like him. I think he's going to have a good reign. Um, I just don't, you know, I'm curious to see who he goes up against. Uh, next on here, we got Sami Zayn and Braun Breaker. This was um, a kind of whatever match to me. I love Sammy. I'm a big Sami Zayn fan, but he did not need this belt. And it, it kind of was, from the beginning, he was kind of a champion that was going to just, he was like a bridge type champion. I'm not a Braun Breaker fan. I, 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 I There's just something about him I don't like. Um, leading up to this, like, he would just come in in street clothes and just spear whoever Sammy was fighting or Sammy himself. Just, like, yeah, you got to make yourself, you know, you, you got to make yourself um, noticed. You know, you got to let people know that you're there and you want this belt. Like, I get, I get it. But he's just, like, a less interesting... I don't know. He's, he's just... I just don't find him very interesting. Uh, um, and his reign as Intercontinental Champion, I think, will be fine. Um, I, I don't... I, I just... Something about him. And, and maybe I... Maybe... Like, I don't even think he's bad. Like, I'm not... Like, like there's people that I straight up don't like. And I have reasons as to why. But there's no, like, definitive reason as to why I don't like Braun Breaker. I'm just not a big fan. So maybe I gotta, maybe, maybe, maybe I owe him a little bit more credit and gotta like go and watch a little bit more of his stuff, but just something about him. I just can't really fully get invested. Um, that's pretty much it. It was kind of a whatever match. What happened happened. We knew that Sammy was losing the belt. Um, I'm curious to see where Sammy goes now. It's it's very interesting, like, once a reign comes to an end, like, what do you do, you know? What's your next story? What's your next push? Um, I'm pretty sure Sammy's beef with Chad is kind of finished to a degree. I don't know. They might circle back to that. Who knows? Next, we got Damian Priest and Gunther uh, for the World Heavyweight Championship. I've said it before. I'm... Gunther to me is just kind of a big guy. He's not really like he's not like he's it's like a Braun Breaker effect where it's like I don't have anything super negative to say about the guy. I just don't like him. I think he's just a big dude. And that's kind of it. But the match was good. Damian Priest, I used to think of as just a big dude, but he's really won me over. His reign was actually a lot of fun to watch. I think he's, you know, him on the mic has gotten better. He's started to come out with his more comedic side a little bit. There were some promos and backstage stuff that he cut was actually kind of funny, um, at least in comparison uh, to most promos and backstage stuff, which is very painfully unfunny. Obviously, not every promo and backstage stuff is going to be funny. But you know when they try to be funny and it's just, like, not, you know? But, yeah. Um, so, obviously, the match itself is good. Uh, Gunther starting to legitimately bleed was pretty crazy. Um, obviously, whenever there's blood involved, it, you know, regardless of if it's intentional or not, you know, you kind of know that you have a pretty physical match on your hands. And that's what it was. They were hitting each other with chop after chop. It was a very, quite literally, a beefy match. Um, and then we all knew Finn was going to cost Damien the belt. You know, he's he, they've had so much beef going into this. And, like, Finn has costed him stuff. And then uh, I think Finn was mad at Damien because didn't Damien cost him? Maybe not. I could be wrong about that. But, like, they've been clashing heads for a minute now. And f there was kind of a botch because literally uh, Damien had to roll Gunther closer to the rope, which made it very much like, okay, dude, like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> um, because Gunther wasn't close enough. But uh, Finn put Gunther's leg up to, to do a rope break and then... 
Damien watching it on the screen because obviously he knew it was happening, but like, you know, kayfabe wise, he didn't know. He was like, wait, what happened? What, why was there a count out? And then seeing it on the screen and then having him turn and look at Finn like, what the fuck? Um, it was a pretty crazy moment. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of sad Damien Priest's reign was at an end. I kind of wish I appreciated it a little more when it was happening. Because another Gunther reign, him holding another belt forever. Because, I, I mean, I could be wrong about that. But, like, it, I do I think he deserves to be in the belt picture? Absolutely. Do I think he deserves to hold the belt? Absolutely. Do I like it? Not really. Because I'm just not a fan of his. You know, I always joke and say, like, I'm gooning for Gunther. But I'm not really gooning that hard, you know? He's He's fine. He's just kind of a big guy, and that's kind of it. But we'll see. I'm I'm very willing to be wrong. Hey, I was wrong about Damien Priest. He's really, you know, his reign, like, made me like him more. So maybe if they book Gunther right and give him a good reign, then maybe I'll like Gunther a little bit more. But we'll see. Next we have which another dud, Bailey and Nia Jax. I think this is a dud on both um, because... I hate that Bailey lost the belt, but at the same time, her reign was, like, pretty boring. The only th notable thing I remember is her kind of feud with Naomi, which wasn't really a feud. It was more of a, uh, it was more of a respect thing. Like, I'm giving Naomi a chance to wrestle me for the belt because I respect her so much, which I actually love to see. Um, it doesn't always have to be good guy versus bad guy, um, which I think is totally fine. Um... But I think Bailey deserved a better reign with how much work she put in and with, um, the you know, blood, sweat, and tears, literal tears at WrestleMania of, like, her getting one over on EO and kind of saying a big screw you to all the damage control after they kind of dicked her over was, was good. And she deserved um, more to come of that. But <clears throat> it didn't really happen, unfortunately. And then Nia Jax is one of those people that, unlike Braun Breaker and Gunther, I legitimately dislike because she, I don't, I really don't like her. I think she's, um, she's hurt people in the ring uh, many times to the point where she actually got fired for it. Now her wrestling could have gotten better and actually probably did get better because to my knowledge, she hasn't hurt anyone yet. Um, but also she's a huge like xenophobe. I think. Is that the terminology? Basically like a big Sandy Hook denier? Like she went on Alex Jones and like was... I don't like that shit, man. Like that's stupid and dumb. And I I also think she's boring. She's boring on the mic. She, she's not very interesting in the ring. Her thing is just I'm shoving my ass in your face. Which honestly like outside of the ring... Alright, fine. But like at... <laughs> I'm so stupid. But like... In the ring, when you're watching a wrestling match, and half of it is just like, let me put my ass in your face. It's boring. Tiffany Stratton is definitely going to turn on her, though. And I think we might get a, a, a Tiffy Time, tiffy time uh, Women's World Championship with the fake cash in and everything. So right now, they're a duo, but I don't think they're going to be for long. I, I really hope Nia Jax's reign is short. Um... I'm really not a fan of hers. Uh, and then last but not least, we got Cody Rhodes and Solo Sokoa. There was no fucking way in hell that Solo was going to beat Cody. No shot. Um, so I was not worried at all for a second about um, <clears throat> Cody losing the belt. And, more, and this match was more of what happened outside of it rather than the match itself. Um, you know, always... Seeing Cody hit the hit the Cody Cutter and Crossroads will never get old. Um, <clears throat> but you had, uh, you know, Tonga Loa and, and um, Loa. Oh, God, I'm so bad with names. I'm sorry. But the two guys, one of them quite literally had an eye patch on. So they're just like, at this point, literally henchmen that came in. And then were chased off by Randy and Kevin, which you love to see. Um, and then Jacob Fatu came in. I... I didn't really get the hype until recently, and then seeing him legitimately, like, break his fucking ankle or his shin or whatever, I don't know if it's broken, but, like, that was a hard hit he took, 
and then like throwing the chairs around and shit. I'm like, oh shit, this guy means business, dude. Like, um, this guy's a fucking specimen. Uh, but after that, like, it, I had a, I have a feeling that that Fatu was supposed to be in the ring when Roman came back. Spoiler alert: Roman came back. We all knew that was gonna happen. Um, <clears throat> but I had a feeling uh, he was supposed to be in the ring because, like, the whole thing about Jacob Fatu was, like, he's supposed to be this unmovable object and then showing that Roman can come back and just toss him aside would have been cool to see. But having Roman come back, hit Solo with a with a Superman punch and a, and a spear was chef's kiss. And him giving a little kind of nod to Cody, like, of acknowledgement, um was very cool too i'm curious to see what they do i don't think they're doing a cody and roman three that's just too much i they're definitely doing a roman uh versus the new bloodline um i don't know if he's gonna reunite with his cousins with jay and jimmy i don't know if it's gonna be like a cody and roman versus solo in the rock situation because it's so obviously the rock is behind this new bloodline because The Rock did say he's coming back and he's coming back for Cody. Um, so it's very, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. I'm a big bloodline hater. I think the storyline is boring. At least it used to be. But they're kind of cooking now. And Roman Reigns, when he came back, that pop he got was very big. And it was, and I, I was very excited to see him. <clears throat> And if you watched any of my wrestling videos before, you'll know that I'm not the biggest Roman Reigns fan. And I think ever seeing him, I think seeing him come back without the belt made me like him. I realized I wasn't, I didn't dislike Roman Reigns. I disliked what the championship did to him. I disliked the man he became, you know. It looks like I'm crying, but actually my throat is getting dry from me talking so much. <coughs> So apologies for that. I'm trying to wrap this up. Um, but yeah, uh, where was I? A Roman, I, I think a Roman face turn is going to feed families. I really like him now. I just, honestly, yeah, I didn't, I, I'm realizing now that I don't think I ever disliked Roman Reigns. I disliked him holding the championship for three fucking years because that was boring. But now that we're past all that, he can come back and we can do a new, you know, we still have to do the bloodline, but at least we can do a new take on it to where it's interesting to someone like me who got bored of it. I could be an outlier. I could be completely off base, but that's just how I feel. And at the end of the day, these are my impressions of stuff. So yeah, that's SummerSlam 2024. I look like I'm crying. It was just such an emotional SummerSlam, you know? You know, it was first we had, you know, we had last year, we had it in Detroit where it's all about family. And this year in Cleveland where it's all about, um, uh, cheating on your ex or something. I don't know. Uh, cause like Dominic jumped the fence. It's all about fence jumping. Cause there were a lot of switch ups. Actually, yeah. That's probably a good uh, indicator, you know. Finn switching up on Damien, Dominic switching up on Rhea, Roman switching up to a degree, even though it's very much warranted. But yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about at this point. That's my review, impressions, whatever, of SummerSlam 2024. I hope you guys enjoyed me kind of talking about this, breaking it down a little bit. Uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, peace. Have a good night, week, everybody. Bye.